welcome to Staring at the Lights with Rob and Ethan. Hello. Um, this week we'll start with Firefest, um, which Fire was on Fest. a Saturday. Sorry, Firefest. We can talk about Firefest if you want. We didn't, we? Not much to talk about. Well, didn't I know, I know, but, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Firefest, AEW's second pay per view, um, yeah. came relatively quickly after the first one. Yeah, quite um, fast. But another really decent showing, really. Yeah. Um, I think one thing was the pre-show I, I don't think was as strong as the first sort of double or nothing one. Um, we'll kind of glance over it a little bit, but I... I, um, I don't know. I didn't say I was saying to you earlier, like, I watched it after it happened. Yeah, and, like, so you kind of saw it all as one show. Like, one thing. I didn't yeah. know it was a pre-show to it. Well, watching it live, they had the, the buy-in was on YouTube. Right. And then it kind of went off and then you would right. go over to... I mean, we watched it on Fight TV, so watched it on there. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I, I didn't. I thought the whole like uh, Lever Bates with um, you know like the whole librarian thing. I just thought it was a little bit too. I don't know. I thought it was a bit WWE. I think and I like. I don't yeah. know. I thought they were a little the bit. The librarian better. gimmick's just awful. Like I don't know why they're trying to. But I've seen her. I've seen her have a match. Um, Lever Bates like cosplaying as Orange Cassidy against right. Orange Cassidy, nice. and it was really good. Yeah, yeah. It, it was really good. But um, yeah, not. I weren't too keen on this one. Um, I just thought it was a bit. When know. was the three man, the three way tag, like the six? That was in the. I think that was the last one, maybe before the main show started. Um, it might have even been the first. I think it might have been the first match. I think it was the first match actually. Sorry, it was. Sorry, match. Yeah, it, was. it was mint. I really, really, really liked good, it. really good. Um, private party were. Yeah, oh, they're amazing. Stole well, the show. They got um, contracts like offered to them on the spot when they got backstage. Yeah, apparently. literally, like, the books just offered them a contract straight away. Cause... Yeah, which uh, and we'll probably touch on it later. But I think the rumours were that's why that on Raw they showed um, Street, Street Profits, Profits on, Ra- it were. on Raw. But when they came out, I was like. Oh god! Like when he came out in that like full jumpsuit with his yeah. like sunglasses on, and started wrestling in his sunglasses, yeah. and I was like, "I hate you! <laughs> I don't know why I hate you." But then like he started like doing a few spots, and I was like, oh, "Okay, these are actually like really good wrestlers. Yeah. Like fair enough. These are, these are wicked." I not seen I never seen him before, but I really really liked him. Enjoy, yeah, I really enjoyed him. Some I love really... the best, like best friends are still my favorite tag team. Really, like, in the entire thing, like, they did a little thing. So after the match, they did a little thing where the lights go out yeah. and the um, dark order now, dark not order, Super Smash yeah. Bros. But they appeared on screen, but all their sort of minions were around, around the, the ring, ring and stuff. They? Yeah, um, I like that. I think they're obviously gearing up to like a tag match between the best friends and Dark Order. Yeah, well, um, this match was to determine who got a buy for the tag team yeah, tournament tag team that tournament. I think is going to be all out. Yeah. So um, that came... They're pushing, they're pushing the best friends a lot, which is... Which yeah. Is, but again, like, it makes sense because they're just like, the books and, like, best friends are just, like, really good mates. Yeah, like, yeah. They all came up through the same indies and stuff. And, yeah. like, PWG, like, the books, Chuck Taylor is, like, PWG legend. Like, mm. they're all good, obviously just, like, really good mates. And it's quite clear that... Because, like, Trent's had a couple of runs in, like, New Japan and stuff like that, but Chuck Taylor's not, never, never really had much. Right. And I think it's because he's, like, he comes across as a comedy wrestler, like a comedy wrestler. Okay. But he's genuinely actually, like, pretty yeah. decent. Like, he, had a lot of, he had a lot of good stuff in Shikara, but, again, Shikara's not really massive, so, like, people didn't know that he was getting them pushes. Yeah. But it feels like the books have, like, recognised how good they are and are giving them that push that they need. Yeah, which is really really yeah, good. Yeah, it was it was a great match. I mean, I enjoyed it. That was the standout of the the the, the, the buy in the pre show yeah, yeah. thing. Um, yeah, Ali versus Lever Bates was okay. I, I think that was a it. last minute thing because I don't think it was meant to be. I Ali skipped, wasn't I meant to be. I skipped through it. it as soon as as soon as she came out with that like librarian shtick, I just turned it. I just yeah. like ten ten yeah. like ten seconds skipped along with the it. entire thing. Yeah, yeah. The um, hardcore match as well that they had. This, oh, with the like the guy that's not yeah. Like, Alex Jabaley is this is the CEO of CEO right. Um, um, again, skip, again, I skipped through it all because when he got in the ring, I didn't know he wasn't a wrestler. Like I didn't, I never heard of him before, so yeah. I didn't know who he was. And then he started throwing them forearms that were just, yeah, there's the, just there's, soft as shit. And the all stuff like, that, oh, no you're, matter how, you're a celebrity yeah. and not an actual wrestler. There's stuff that just, no matter how much yeah. training you can do, yeah. you're, there's still some sort of psychology stuff well, yeah, in there when, that when he's, he's not going to he, get. Yeah, when he started like the off the ropes and like, he took a back, like he took a back bump off like a shoulder tackle, and I thought it just it looked mint. Like I just looked like a normal wrestler. Yeah, and he started throwing them forearms. And I was like, oh. well, I think there was a bit where Nakazawa was, I think, maybe choking him or something, and he's kind of just almost smiling, yeah, almost, and it it's a bit just, like he's not selling yeah, it. He's, I just, but it's I just, just fast forward through it. It's experience, isn't it? Yeah, I it did like the whole um, rather than sort of jumping on Lego, they had like the button yeah, things that he pulled yeah, out yeah, of the yeah. bag, and yeah. Um, but I, I don't, yeah, I didn't. Nah, I just don't think it was a strong start. Apart yeah. from the tag match, the tag match was wicked. Was mint. Yeah. Um, 
but I don't think it was a strong start to no. it. It was didn't, a little. I, I think it. a few people were, were sort of saying that online as well. We were a little bit like, nah, this is a this little is a bit. bit this is not great. But then the main card. So yeah, Seema uh, versus Christopher Daniels. Really good. Great match. I liked the, it a lot. Daniels is amazing. Yeah, the just amount of veteran, just an like, absolute veteran knows in what he's and doing. knows what he's doing. Yeah, it's it. wicked. Um, really good match. So I think that's going to lead on to uh, Kenny Omega's having a match against Seema at the yes. um, Fight for the Fallen, yeah, which yeah, is yeah. in a couple of weeks. Yes, not far away. July 15th, no. 16th, something like that, I want to say. I don't know. Top 16th, name. I think it is. Yeah, I think it is, yeah. Not far off. Um, then we had the sort of women's three-way match. A um, yes. couple of the girls that were from um, Double or Nothing, a couple of the Yoshi girls. Yeah. Um, Rio and uh, Yuka Sakazaki. Uh, yeah, Sakazaki. I can never say that name. Probably. Go on. Um, and Nyla Rose as well. Um, I like I like Nyla Rose. I think she's great. Some of the spots that she, the, yeah, the whole sh- I'm about it. Yeah, the yeah, strength yeah. is unbelievable. Crazy. There, she did like a double suplex on both of them. Um, I like that style. Mm, yeah. I don't mind that style. I was watching the, one of the. Um, she is going to be strong eventually. Let's be honest. Yeah, I was watching one of the Vice <laughs> Land documentary things today um, about sort of Japanese wrestling and women's wrestling, yeah. and they focused a lot on stardom and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they kind of, I, I, I quite like that. Yeah. They, it's they really take pride in it, and it's like definitely, a, yeah, they love it, they love it. I was, um, I was listening to Joe Rogan the other day, uh, with Joey Diaz. Okay, and he's talking about like, <laughs> like they were talking about like Pride Festival. Okay, um, and they both come to the kind of come to conclusion that they just if you're gay, you're gay. If you're straight, you're straight. Yeah, like yeah. If, whatever you're trans, whatever you are, it doesn't matter. Joe Rogan was like the one issue that I have is like with trans like women transitioning no trans trans men transitioning to women in like competitive sports and stuff like this like right. ufc fighting and stuff like this one woman that was a man for like all of her life and then transitioned like transitioned to mma and just like was just decimating everyone yeah. because she's bound to because she's just built differently and i was thinking like you should look up nyla rose because it's not real so like we can get away with it it's totally fine like it's allowed to happen yeah like you would like that i was like and that's like that's the one thing like if you can do it in any sport She's chose the right one to do it in. Yeah. Like she's picked the perfect sport because we all know it's not real. So yeah. like it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And it's like and it's just wicked. Like I just think it's really, really cool that yeah. she's like accepted and, and does a good job at what she does. And it's never and it's great because it's never referenced. No. It's never referenced no, in commentary. Or like that. I, there's probably some promotions that may she probably would have done but yeah, I, yeah. I, I I never heard it in any of those. Never stuff. heard it in either of the pay per views that she's been involved with. And again, like just genetically, she's gonna be stronger than all them lasses that are in there because that's just the way it works. But it's not real, so like you aren't gonna worry about any of that stuff. Um but no, I think I think she's really good. Yeah. I think she's found a niche definitely. Definitely has, definitely has. Um the four way match, um, Adam Page versus yeah. Jimmy Havoc versus Jungle Boy again. I like this and, a lot. And MJF. MJF's promo was oh, it's crazy. <laughs> absolutely so brilliant. It's probably one of the hottest like heels he is, that there is right yeah. now. I love I love I love the heel like I love a promo where they say a line and it gets like an applause from half the crowd who know it's not real. Yeah. And then a boo from like the other half that are genuinely like pissed off at what he said. Yeah. Like, cause, like I remember like there's an old um when CM Punk won the title for the first time in Ring of Honor and he'd like he'd got like he was doing like a big heel ring he got he got hip tossed out of a ring by Jimmy Snooker I want to no not Jimmy Snooker <laughs> um oh not Jimmy Snooker who's the guy that fought Macho Man in like Wrestlemania 3 and it was like one of the best matches ever super no Ricky Steamboat oh okay yeah yeah yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ricky Steamboat and he got I think he got, I think it was him that got like hip tossed him out of the ring and then like, after that happened he got like this entire like face turn where he was like I looked up to these guys and I've disrespected them and I've realised what I've been doing wrong and all yeah. this stuff. And like, massive face turn. And then it got to, like, he won the title. He's, like, on his knees crying, like, streamers, gets the mic and it's, like, it was, that was, the, like, the original pipe bomb. Right, CM yeah. Punk did. And he's, like, and it, I don't remember the exact line, but it's a classic thing where he's, like, and I'd like to thank absolutely nobody. Like, I am the greatest. <laughs> yes, and so half, half the crowd are, like, oh, like, <laughs> fucking perfect. Like, yeah. this is amazing. The other half are, like, Fuck you, like bro, all this shit. And it was like MGF's like, yeah, I like video games, and then I lost my virginity. And after we're like, oh, like fair play, mate. And I think it just cuts to that one kid like in the yeah, crowd, just, just like staring at him. He's like, distraught. I'm a virgin. <laughs> it's just like oh shit, like just absolutely good. Like that was hilarious. MGF's money, mate. He's so funny. It's, yeah, he's he's great. But that match he's was great. wicked. I don't normally like four ways because they get a bit clusterfuck sometimes yeah. and a little bit like lost in their own thing. But I think it's because in some matches you you kind of get an idea. It's, 
triple threat ones maybe certainly with singles matches where yeah. you can see you can't see where it's coming guy you, you can but you can't when the finish happens you're a bit like oh okay yeah, that's where it is yeah, yeah. but with a four way like okay so get them out the ring they're out the ring they're out the yeah, yeah, yeah so you know it's going to happen but I, I thought Jimmy Havoc had a really good showing in it like obviously he had the pin but I thought he yeah. did really well. Like he I thought Jungle Boy would have and... took the pin, to be honest. Yeah, but... me too. I agree. I, when, it, when it happened, I was like, oh, shit. Jimmy's eating the pin. Yeah. But I don't think he minds, to be Didn't fair. go that long, this one. It was only like no. just over 10 minutes. Pretty fast match. The, um, the actual the women's three-way before it went 12 and a half. So really? it, went, it went longer, yeah. Nice. Um, Cody versus Darby Allin. Really good. Like... I, I, Darby Allin's... I think we tweeted about it afterwards. Like He's on the rise so quickly he's just come to prominence so quickly hasn't he's he fucking, he's amazing some of the bumps that he takes that kind of back <laughs> body drop onto the, onto the apron hardest part of the ring <sighs> onto the hardest part of the ring apart from the metal ring post but everybody forgets yeah about. true <laughs> um, even like I don't I, Tom was saying he didn't really like the body bag spot but I didn't mind it it was pretty cool I guess I like, thought it was alright yeah there's nothing I didn't have anything against it Nah, he's really good. He tweeted a video earlier about of him doing some skateboard. Yeah, and, like, skateboard just, like, video. Hurting himself really yeah. hard, and he was like, "People think I've been just as a new thing. I've been doing this for a very long time. Yeah. Like, don't worry. Like, I get, I know what I'm doing." And I'm like, "Yeah, you know, I know what you're doing, but it still hurts. It's still going to catch up with you. Yeah. And it's definitely going to take its toll." But like, he is mint. Like, he's so good. It's good to see. Um, another thing that I thought Tom mentioned as well is, is it good to see that Cody being the bigger guy as well? Yeah, he's not normally. You don't no, normally see him as the like big guy, a big buff guy. Yeah, no, definitely. Yeah, he wrestled a really good match, a really strong match. Um, there was a few minute like bits in it where I thought that should have been the end. Like they did a couple of things around like that. You don't kick out of that, but yeah. No, nah, again I really though, I, I liked. I liked that it went to they a draw. Kept, they kept the finish though. Like they kept the like crossroads until the very last minute. Yeah, they didn't hit that. It just ran out of time. Was like the the way they timed that pin was perfect. fucking perfect. Like when yeah. like the referees like. On two as the last second counts down, and she's like bringing her hand down. And she's like, "Yeah, oh shit." I like that she was the ref as well. Yeah, I like that girl. You know, all right, really all right, I like that. Yeah. Uh, I think we'll probably maybe see NXT do that with um, Jessica Carr. As yeah. I think she's start doing a, a few men's matches. I yeah, think, yeah. At the minute, they just seem to just keep a fair women's for women's, women's men's men's. ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it, I think that'll be a no. The entire timing thing. I feel like that's what they should have done with Kenny's match against Okada when they drew. Um, I yeah, think, I think that just ended where they just both they just both out in the ring. They were sort of one about it, kind of like crawling towards yeah. each other. I think they should have done a thing where it's like arm over him, two count as the last second pins down. You yeah. like maybe he would have won, maybe to kicked out. Yeah, like, you don't know. It's like, hard to get those things right. I remember it's really hard. Like you could fuck that up easily. Oh like, yeah. Do you so remember easy. when would it, I think it would have been Charlotte and Sasha Banks did that thirty minute Iron Woman match? I and back to it. Charlotte had Sasha Banks in the figure eight, yeah. and there was she had she had it in for like a good sort of twenty thirty seconds, yeah. and the the clock is on the big screen, yes, yeah, so and it's counting yeah. down, and it got to two, and then she tapped out. Yeah, I'm like you what could you, you could have lasted two more seconds. Yeah. Like if you'd have you tapped have out with much. twelve thirteen yeah, seconds to go, yeah, it's yeah. a bit more. But like one second, but not two seconds. Like even tapping out at one second, I'd be like, that's kind of cool because she just couldn't last any longer. I don't know. I, I just think you should have just you. You can see it. You can just think. I can. Like, I, can, two, I, can hang seconds, I can hang on. I can hang on. And put yourself through it. Yeah, I suppose. I know what you're saying. I think a little bit longer time than then it doesn't give you time to reset. No, maybe. Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. That's that, that's the way I yeah. thought it would no, have I worked. Know, I agree. Um, but yeah, Cody came out of it with the not a concussion apparently, but a, a nasty unprotected chair shot. Yeah. Um, a bit, a bit of a weird one this because they kind of referenced afterwards like. Well, we you know we gimmicked the chair, but it still happened and all. Oh and yeah, they're like, gonna make excuses, but just don't even make excuses. Just fucking, if you want to do it, do it. Like, no, what they should have done, and, and and Tony Khan maybe should have come out, you know, because he gave the whole line of like, you can make the safest airplane in the world, but if the pilot gets it wrong, yeah, he gets yeah, it yeah. wrong. Which is true. It's it's, it's a very good point, but what he probably should have said, just to sort of protect everybody, would have been, he shouldn't have done that. We'll be having words with Cody yeah, yeah, for not yeah, putting yeah. his hands up, yeah. but we'll be reprimanding Sean yeah, yeah, Spears yeah. for for yeah, delivering yeah, that as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. No, he should have. Or like, just should have said like, not even like, no, he's not on co- like in kayfabe terms. It's not Cody's fault. I should no. should have reprimanded Sean yeah, Spears yeah, yeah, for yeah, it. Like, it should have yeah. like been. We're gonna look at. We're gonna like launch an investigation. Like, we'll be we'll be in touch with Sean Spears. We'll try and figure this out. But yeah. like, don't come out and say like, oh, we, we sorry, like the chair was gimmicked yeah. and all this stuff. Like, if it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Yeah, we were saying at work like. I know it sounds awful to say I don't mind an unprotected chair shot, but 
they, at the end knowing of the day, what we know now about things we know like now CT yeah now we know now it's shit and i get that it hurts but it, i i don't know what to, i don't know how to explain what i mean i get you look back in like the times of you know like what damage it's caused to people, mm. but that's when they were taking unprotected chair shots like every night, and they're getting hit in the head every night, or like numerous headshots after a headshot. Like, mm. look, like some people are tweeting like this is awful, shouldn't be allowed, like it shouldn't be like banned and all this stuff. And I was thinking like you can you can go back and watch Mick Foley get hit in the head like nine times by the Rock, yeah, thirteen the chair quit, shots, thirteen chair shots yeah. in the I quit match, with his, with his hands tied behind yeah. his back. Like and, and in the interview, like there's a, there's a documentary, not a documentary, but like, an interview with Mick Foley about it, where like when they're on the ramp and he's walking up the ramp, apparently he wasn't meant to hit him that many times. No, and Mick Foley wasn't even feeding him; he was just trying to walk away. Like he was trying to walk away, yeah. and every time he like turned around to see where the rock was, the rock was just hitting him again. Yeah, and, like, obviously he can't do anything about it. So his hands. They are tied kind of fell out about that as well because he, yeah, well he's... in in the Beyond the Mat documentary, yeah. the, the, Mick Foley's backstage, and obviously Mick Foley's a nice guy in the world, but he's like, oh maybe uh, maybe the rock hit me a few more times than he should have, but it seemed like it came across really well, so I'm, I'm happy with the match and all this stuff. And yeah, now, but then after the fact, apparently like the rock had to come and apologise. And... Well, well, I'm really sorry and all this stuff. Yeah, I think what really kind of pissed Mick Foley off was not the, well, maybe not the amount of chair shots. They, they, he certainly took more than what he should have done. Yeah. And they just put that down to the rock just being, you know, I'm yeah, in the zone in the, and in whatever. I'm in the moment yeah, yeah. And, I, and I'm just going with it and yeah. whatever and look at the reaction and yeah. all this kind of stuff. But I think what the, the, the real sort of problem came from that the rock never went to check on him afterwards. No, he didn't. He yeah, never he went, went to say, like, you're all right, like, yeah, you know, no, we no. got a bit that's, out of hand there. That's and, fucked up. Yeah, definitely. But like I'm saying, like, looking back to that, at the end of the day, Cody Rhodes is a grown man who understands the business. He understands yep. what damage that can do. If he wants to take an unprotected chair shot for the business to put over that storyline, then who am I to say that? I, who, well, am I, who am I to get online and complain? Like, come on. Look at look at the ones we've seen before. So, like, um, JBL's receipt from Stevie Richards yeah, for the whole Blue Meanie thing. Yeah, it's awful chair shots. Like, when Kem Shamrock, when, like, Undertaker, like... No, when Undertaker, not Ken Shamrock. Well, well, there is one with Ken Shamrock yeah. on his knees. You're like middle fingers, the Undertaker, and Undertaker just like canes him with a chair. Undertaker does it on Mr. Kennedy Mr. as well. Mr. Kennedy went into business for himself and cut that promo, and Undertaker just went out and just fucking. Is it like the middle of the like, match or something? Yeah, just, just like he just bent that chair around his head. Like it literally, it, like, it, like stuck on his head. It, like crumbled around his head. Like he yeah. hit him with such fucking force. Like that was just ridiculous. Yeah. There's so many back in the day where you think. I get that if you're doing it every single night, it shouldn't be allowed and it should be banned and it's going to cause serious damage. But yeah. And again, I'm not a doctor, so I don't know what one no, do to and you, it's, but it's, I think one over 12, or one over one every night. One, one one night out of the month in God knows how long, over one every single night, five nights a week. Like, the I thing sure is, there's a difference in what damage it does to you. It's hard to... I mean, obviously, the idea is you hit someone with a chair, it knocks them out, you come over as this as the bad guy, which yeah. is what it's designed to do. Yeah, the yeah. person who's taking it is like, oh my God, are they all right? Yeah. And all this kind of thing. When, um, when it's a chair shot that clearly both hands are in the air yeah. and it's protected it takes it away because you just think it, isn't it? you didn't hit you that much well it didn't even hit you yeah it didn't even actually touch you it, took, it hit your hands like that yeah really and then obviously we have to suspend some you belief you and everything believe, yeah, yeah yeah but that always kind of comes across to me as like oh he's got him we're like no he yeah, didn't hit him. You literally and not things. that I want to see people getting smacked around the head like it's the mid nineties anymore. Oh no, it's it's a double edged sword, isn't it? Because you can't you can't say that you liked it without sounding like you're coming across as like you want people to get hurt. Yeah, like so I don't I don't want that at all. I just thought for the moment for the story they're trying to build, it was the perfect business choice. I would like, I would rather see um I would rather see that type of um instance with a chair than for in, than than say like um a suplex onto a a stack of chairs you know yeah. like you know when um kevin owens used to do it quite a bit and he did it against roman reigns in the rumble a few years ago where he stacked all yeah, the chairs yeah, up yeah, and yeah, yeah. Super super like onto it like that's more dangerous because that can really damage Genuinely, your back yeah yeah, yeah. There's, there's a few up there's a few moments where i'm definitely in the camp that it shouldn't be done a lot yeah like we when we watched um spike trevay against jimmy havoc at progress yeah and so jimmy havoc took loads of unprotected chair shots yeah, and i'm did. like it's mint for the story and it like works for the story and it works really well but you're in a front of a crowd of like 300 people yeah. mate. like come yeah. on what are you doing to yourself like but when you're on the world stage you've been like it's your second pay-per-view you gotta get eyes on you you gotta get like traction they got i guess they got what they wanted out of it because they got everybody online talking about it like i assume it was like probably one of the biggest news things on yeah. wrestling twitter so yeah yeah they got what they wanted like they got people talking about the show yeah so it, it what's if you're cody and you've started this business and you want it to do well and you want it to like prosper 
I mean, I think I'd do it. Like, fucking hell, if we like did a live stand at a light show and I knew that if I took an unprotected chair shot to the head, it'd get like a lot of people looking at it, I'd probably do it. Yeah, maybe. It'd suck. Initially, it'd getting, lot, the, getting like, eyes on it. And yeah, then... but if it's going to get eyes on your products, then you just do what you got to do, don't you? It's yeah. business mind. Like, you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, maybe. Um, the sort of six man tag match, so the elite, Kenny Mega, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, mm-hmm. and then um, Lucha Brothers with um, Laredo Kid. Yes. I did. I, I enjoyed this match. It wasn't as good as the tag match that. Um, not against the. Yeah, the Bucks and Lucha Brothers had at Double no, or Nothing, no, no, no. but it was still pretty good. Yeah, really good. I like the. Um, the entrances are pretty good and they look good in the they look uh, wicked yeah like the entire like I think it was Double Dragon like a Double Dragon yeah I saw Street Fire at least whichever one of the two yeah I really really liked the it the only thing I didn't like about it is how they did a like a, a move from the game that didn't touch them and they all like fell on the floor what the Hadouken yeah. yeah yeah, that was the only thing I was like Kenny used Kenny used to hit the Hadouken though like in Indies like he hit the Hadouken quite a lot mm. do you know it's weird I was looking back like Kenny Omega is one of the best wrestlers in the world but he used to have like a big arsenal of moves that weren't real <laughs> like yeah. obviously weren't real he used to do a thing called the chainsaw where like he'd like start his arm up like as a chainsaw and then just like rub his forearm against people's like foreheads <laughs> and then people would like go mental as if they'd like been caught up and stuff and I'm like you're the best wrestler in the world like Hit like a brain boss yeah. or something like he'd hit that move and like and then like run around the ring like uh, the old guy with like the bull wings yeah, do, like he'd like yeah. run around with like his arm in the air and people would be like oh shit like get out of the way I'm like it's just your forearm mate it's yeah. never moving like why people it's, it's weird because they do stuff like that but then you look at like Kenny Omega's V trigger and it's yeah one of it's the, like, like the most brutal moves of all time there's no like yeah, nice it's way really, of taking really it weird, isn't it it's, it's really like weird. Osprey's hidden blade yeah, thing when you think like... about it it's quite strange. And I like the I like the match. There's nothing against the match. It was good. I don't think it was good as a six man the three way tag at the start of the show. No, I think it was more entertaining. It was entertainment than more than anything, weren't it? Than the yeah, than yeah. sort of wrestling. Yeah, definitely. Classic almost that the, they did at double or nothing. Yeah, but yeah. it was still enjoyable. Um, sort of really, sort of maybe a day or two before the actual event happened is when they announced that the John Moxley Joey Janela were going to be a a non sanctioned yeah. match. Um, last episode we were like, it's got to be a hardcore got match. To, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And it, it was it was good. I know I I read that um, apparently Dave Meltzer didn't like it. He was like it was just violence for the mm, sake of violence. Yeah, but it's not. I mean, we've seen worse death, worse death seen matches than that. Much worse death matches than that. I saw Zandy get some hooks put into his back and yanked up against in the middle of the ring, like crucified. Like that's nothing compared to what some stuff do. But there were things on there that were oh brutal. The, the sort Still of barbed brutal. wire chair and yeah, the barbed yeah, yeah. wire on the boards and Still stuff. Really and brutal, but. Amazing. Stamping his feet on the Amazing. drawing pins. I saw him do that in progress in New York against Jimmy Havoc. Jimmy Havoc put his feet in the drawing pins and I was like, oh my God, Like, what the fuck is happening here? I remember listening to uh, Jericho's podcast and they'd had that kind of Ambrose Asylum match that yeah. had drawing pins on yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. And it, I think it was maybe like an hour before the match where um, Moxley sort of said to him, like, uh, do you fancy doing this little spot? Um, just going to put some thumbtacks on the floor, basically. I'm going to suplex you onto yeah, him or yeah, drop yeah. you onto him. And... Jeff was like, oh, I don't know. Like I don't his know. first time of doing it, weren't he? Yeah, I'm not so. sure. But then he said, when I did it, he's like, well, it not as bad as I thought yeah. it was going to be. It don't look awful, you know. I don't think it'd be that bad. I don't know. I've had, like, staples fired into my hands and stuff, and that doesn't hurt like you think it would. I've, like, I mean, I've got an arm full of tattoos, so obviously. Yeah, yeah. I, I assume. I, 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 I haven't got any tattoos, but I assume it probably feels similar. It's because um, once it's in, I don't think it'd hurt anymore. I think it's pulling it out. It's probably it yeah, but it, it, you know, like I've done it before. Where I've put my hand down or something, and it's something sharp. Like, like, cool. and you're like what was that? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It really. Like, but then I probably think I can't imagine like loads of these, and I'm on my back. I don't but, know. I, I get when you. I bet when you're in the moment and your adrenaline's running, I don't think you'd actually feel it at all. Yeah, I really don't think you'd yeah. feel anything. Like, I, yeah, I loved the match. I thought it was really good. Like Moxley looked happy. Like as sad as a horrible. Yeah, like, there was a little bit where as it sounds when he was stood on the chair on Joey Janela, yeah. and then all the crowd started singing, chanting "You sick fuck," and yeah. he just got out and just, just bowed to about, them all. Yeah. And I, I, even, like the like, sort of leg sweep off yeah. the ring apron through the table, and it came across like he was really enjoying himself. Yeah, it looked like he was like home again. Like I was like, this is amazing. Yeah, we we spoke about this the other day as well. Like the picture afterwards, there was a little photo of them both sort of sat on the seat together, yeah, yeah, yeah. and um, again, you, you couldn't be here today, but Tom made a really good point of like. He's got no blood feud with anybody yet, Moxley. Not yet. Every match he's had, he's been. I ain't got a problem with you, but I'll fight I'll if you want. Fight if you want to do. Let's yeah, have yeah. a fight. Which is um, good. I, I like. I, like that. I don't I like mind. That. We'll have a drink afterwards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I like that though. Yeah, I think that's a really good. I think that's a really good like character. Yeah, we look have. at his um, US title match in in New Japan. Yeah, where yeah. He's he beat kind of the shit out of the kid and then just like carrying him around. Like you're like, you're with yeah. me, mate. You're sound. You're and, cool. You. I like that. No, I really loved it. I thought it could have gone worse. 
it could have gone a lot better. It could have had like been a lot more brutal if they wanted it to be. Because I've seen both of them guys do some. Yeah. Well, look at the thing that shit. Joey Janela did off the off the roof through the exactly against Zandy. Like he got put through that that truck with like flaming tables and glass panes and stuff. And, and stuff like. I saw Joey Janela get his like suplexed onto some cinder blocks in like suplex on like German suplex onto some cinder blocks in New York, and his head, the back of his neck, hit these cinder blocks, and like the cinder blocks like just like puffed out smoke yeah. and I was like you're dead There's yeah. de- you're nowhere you're alive anymore so like they could have gone a lot lot more hardcore but uh, what they yeah. did what they did was perfect like what they did was fine this no, was didn't the, need any more didn't need any less yeah this was the probably type of hardcore slash sort of death match that I would You'd be all right enjoy watch. watching yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, again sort of going back to the Vice thing they've got a one about sort of death matches and I'm, I, I, I wince watching it mm. like I can't, I can't remember his name but there's a guy on there and his back is just shreds, shreds. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. you just think you know that like um kind of flooring that's like is it like diamond cut flooring it's yeah. like all it's like his back looked like that uh, yeah and i, I just think know. why would you, why would you want to do that to yourself i don't know i don't know why any of them do it to themselves i i do like watching it it sounds quite sick but i do enjoy watching it and like, i thought that was like the perfect if you're a casual fan yeah or you're not into deathmatch wrestling yeah you would like that match like you'd enjoy that match. i think it's probably a good introduction to that time. yeah it's like definitely. A, a gateway yeah yeah, yeah. match like almost. You almost yeah like, so you're like what you could what you could have almost yeah yeah no i was um speaking to a guy from work called Matt and I was like before it happened um Matt Neve and I was showing him some like old CW C- <laughs> yeah. um spots that John Moxley did yeah and like I showed him one and he like kind of like kind of watched through it and then I showed him another and it was like I think it was Moxley getting put through a pane of glass and like the the hits it and it doesn't look that bad like it's only like a suplex through it right and then he sits up and his back's like perfectly fine and then it just starts seeping blood yeah. like, out of like a million different places and Matt just like was like Oh my god! I just had to like yeah. turn away and couldn't watch yeah. anymore. And I was like, I get that. I get that. That's too much with a lot of people. But if you, yeah, if you're not fully into that stuff, that was the perfect match to watch. I think where you can still enjoy it, but not feel too like it was no worse than the Mick Foley Randy Orton match, the death like the, the no DQ match they had like years and years and years ago. Yeah, when, like, yeah. Orton, when Orton got put into the thumbtacks and stuff like that. After that, like he reversed the RKO and like Orton falls into the thumbtacks yeah. and stuff and like. Edge, Edge put Mick Foley through a flaming table yeah. like, at wrestling. Like, isn't, it's not awful compared to what they did. It's certainly not like one of those um, C4 matches that they would have exactly in Japan. Right. Exploding, da- exploding barbed wire like, C4 Jesus. matches. Yeah, it's not that bad. No, it was really good. I really, really liked yeah, it. Yeah, it kind of... It definitely picked up the pay-per-view. I, again, probably the last three matches carried the pay-per-view through yeah. again. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. little like it did with Double Nothing. Double Nothing was great, but those last three matches... Really Helped stood out along, and yeah, and, yeah. and gave it a really good finish. It's almost like three main events, and, and this yeah, felt yeah. the same, really. It did yeah, really good. Um, so yeah, we're getting into fight for the fall in a couple of weeks. So yeah, Cody not and Dustin away. Rhodes against the Young Bucks. Um, I'm not sure who's Cody's. Oh, I think it might be a mixed match. I think Cody and Brandy and I'll have to look it up because I can't remember who it is. Oh. But. Um, but yeah, really good pay per view. Um, I'm looking forward to the next one. It should be pretty good. And then before I mean, you know it, all out, all out. Yeah, we're not be far away, mate. And then a couple, you know, before we know it, after that, the the TV show starts, and yeah, we're right Time in the middle fast, of a, mate. we're right in the middle of um, a, a genuine alternative to watch on Exciting weekly times. now. Wrestling now, yeah, Exciting so it should be good. Can't wait. Um, so let's move on to WWE. Um, Heyman and bless me and. Eric Bischoff named as yeah. Um, mental, yeah, executive director roles. Bischoff's not started yet. He's starting just after um, Extreme Rules pay per view, which is right. in a couple of weeks' time. So he'll probably start on the sixteenth, which is yeah, fourteenth for Extreme Rules, and then sixteenth um, is when the SmackDown will be. Yes. But he's been at the SmackDowns. He's been sat at Gorilla, and he's just kind of watching how the shows go, which kind of makes sense because SmackDown wasn't anything great this week, apart from Kevin I didn't Owens. Watch it. Kevin Owens was probably I saw the, the Kevin Owens spot, like, yeah. well, segment, but I didn't see that was the standout show. bit for me. Um, but Heyman has been kind of running the show with Vince at Gorilla. Yeah. Um, apparently, just absolute harmony yeah, yeah, between yeah. them both. Apparently and, so. Apparently, they're getting on really well. Um, you can tell the difference in the show itself. Like the show just oh, felt it felt different. Like, I think it had um, maybe nearly like a twenty percent. Increase in viewers, yeah, yeah. I think. It felt way different watching it. And again, like nothing really changed. Like no No, I think what they did well was they did the order of things in a better way. So like the Braun and Bobby Lashley thing, normally may they may have done something like that where they're going through the 
the stage yeah. and all that sparking. They normally do that like at the end, Very and end. that's how the yeah, show no. closes. Yeah, yeah. But to do it at the beginning, yeah, they did it the right way around. I, I thought that was it gets you excited, didn't it? For yeah, show, it was definitely. really good, and and seeing uh, street profits there, obviously the. Yeah called up probably to make the you know yeah yeah do we kind of go and we've got someone like that yeah, as well yeah, don't yeah. forget about it yeah yeah but and i know i really enjoyed it, I enjoyed it was really good. there's a lot of different a lot and it's weird because it's like new but not new like you've seen it you've seen that for every every yeah. week for the past however many years but yeah. it's just it just felt different watching it and it's really really weird but Heyman's, i really liked it Heyman's amazing i love paul Heyman. he's one of the best of all time I, absolute I, dickhead but like well, yeah but on the time. mic he's absolutely fantastic I, he, he can write a show he's clever amazingly he's well. just really clever when Smackdown was a great mind yeah him. in the early 2000s when he was writing for Smackdown Smackdown was the better show out well, of it the was, two it was meant to be the B show like he got he went to Smackdown to write Smackdown and didn't have many guys so he went to Vince and went right I want Eddie I want yeah. Benoit yeah. Like, I want all these like you like little cruiserweights and Vince obviously wanting Brock and like the yeah. eight foot muscle heads was like yeah of course you can have them fucking little weasels I don't want them mm. and then like and then he just wrote an entire show around them and they were perfect yeah. it was a better show of like better yeah. show out of the two like he just he just gets it he just gets he just has a perfect wrestling man like obviously at the end of the show when AJ turned uh, heel yeah and joined back with the club I reckon that day or the day before Heyman like rocked up to the creative meeting and was like right idiots <laughs> remember that fucking that group you've had the bullet club the hottest thing in wrestling remember yeah. the three guys that you've got that started that entire thing that have just been sitting on your show for the past four years we're doing that you should have done this well, four years ago you know, we're doing it now apparently, you retards and the, I just went away with it and it just was like, absolutely perfect like, apparently that turn was has been in the works for a while I don't just, believe it I saw that I, bull- I think it's bullshit because I think, I think if you're if you get wrestling the bullet club is the most lucrative money making thing yeah. out, like, not anymore because there's not really many, anybody left in it now but the originals are there aren't they originals are there but like when but you not the ones back, that made it what no, it is like the books aren't there anymore like no. Kenny's not there anymore AJ's not there anymore Finn's not there anymore yeah. like you've got the bullet, like you've got Docker Anderson and Gallows, yeah, and AJ Styles in the same business, yeah. and you're not putting them together. They've tried to hit what it before, haven't they? Where they they brought well, they did the old thing with like they wrote walk past and like throw up a two suite and like AJ yeah. and Norm and stuff like that. And but like, they brought yes, like um, Balor over, and he had a little ca- yeah, tiny little thing with Gallows and Anderson thing. going, and if then they started up, the old Balor Club, and yeah. it's like we can't call it Bullet Club because they own yeah. the name. So we and then, then there was the club with AJ. Yeah, and, like, the first when he like turned on John Cena, it was just the club. Then they had that stuff, T-shirt, like, the OGBC, OGBC, which we obviously we know what that means. Yeah, I'd I'd be quite excited. I know he's. Not on that show now, but I'd be quite excited if they work an angle where surprise me Finn comes like, across. Wouldn't and surprise me. Would not surprise me at all because I think I think Heyman likes factions. I think Heyman's a big fan of factions, um, and I wouldn't be surprised if he manages to get a deal where Finn gets brought back over because we haven't seen Finn in weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks. He's no. not been around, so it wouldn't surprise me if he manages to sway. Vince he's still in the like, champion as well. Yeah, but he could drop that. He could drop that yeah. and like get him back onto Raw and then have an, an actual, like for the first time in how many years, an actual four man faction that's not been around for yeah. quite a long Maybe time. Maybe a bit of an like, implosion a few years down the yeah, line when they're fucking, fighting for it'd be amazing. leadership almost. It'd be amazing. But one thing I didn't really enjoy about the whole episode of Raw was the Mike Kanellis and Maria oh, Kanellis like thing. I it was good heat. It's, it's quite funny because it's. They held back that she's pregnant. Yeah, yeah. And then they signed this five years deal. And then she went, oh, by the way, I'm pregnant. Yeah. So uh, I'll see you next year. I'm off now. And it's like a half a million dollar contract. You've got to do what you've got to do, haven't you? But I don't think there's any plans to keep uh, Mike Bennett on Raw. I think he's going to go back down to 205. Yeah. But yeah, it was just a bit of a weird... I quite liked it. I thought it was good heat. That's just me. Strange to just sort of like bury... Your husband in the most awful way on the main show, though. But then uh, it's heel heat, isn't it? Yeah, and then heat, maybe we're meant to feel sorry yeah, for, yeah, yeah, for him now. Feel and... sorry for him. That's the exact reason why they did it. But I thought it was really good. I liked it. I think there's. I think once Bischoff's in, I think we'll see a real turn. I think. I think we'll really see see a real like push now of these three, these mm. two guys taking over each show and and really going for it. And yeah. hopefully Vince just says, "Yep." Yeah, off you go yeah, on. do it. Do what you to need do. to do. Yeah, because Triple H was all, would have would have been like that. He'd have been like, "Yep, yeah, do what yeah, you need to do." Definitely. I'll I'll carry on with two five five. Yeah, and, I'll do what I'm doing. And NXT. Yeah, and you two just take over that. Oh and, no, definitely. And we'll plan everything yeah, around. Yeah. So I did quite enjoy that. Um, 
one one actual promotion we don't really talk much about, but I know Tom's really excited about it, is this Sunday is Impact Slammiversary. Okay. Um, I honestly know, know nothing about it. Well, we've so. got I've got the card, so we'll run through it. It's actually, looking at it, it's a pretty decent card, actually. Mm-hmm. So um, I don't know what order these are in, but um, we'll go through. So we've got the Impact X Division title match is Rich Swan versus Johnny Impact. Cool. Rich Swan is the current champion. Yeah. Um, I like Rich Swan. Yeah, I like that. Um, then there's a singles match is Moose versus Rob Van Dam. <laughs> okay. Moose is like, he's just been there for years, hasn't just he? Just around, isn't he? He's a weird guy, but It's just a weird name. Moose. <laughs> it's such a strange <laughs> name, isn't it? <laughs> um, then there's another singles match, Sammy Callahan versus Tessa Blanchard. Okay. Cool. I think that could be pretty good. Yeah, it was, yeah. was it I a like recent that. thing? Uh, was it Sammy Callahan who spit the water on Jim Cornette? Yes. The other week, yeah, while yeah, they were yeah. sat stage. Inside, yeah, yeah. yeah. Was that for? What was that? It wasn't anything to do with Impact, though, was it? I don't know what it was. It was like it was coming out. It was coming out to wrestling. I think Jim Connett was on commentary or something. Maybe it's from MLW like, or something. Like spit water, and then Jim Connett just went mental and just, like, split him, off he? at him. Yeah. Do you know? And Sammy Connett was just like flipping him off yeah. as he like walked down the ramp. That was really, really good. I don't know if it was in any kind of retaliation to the whole like Joey Ryan thing. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Yeah, strange. Um, first blood match: Eddie Edwards versus Killer Cross. Nice, I like Eddie Edwards. Killer Cross is huge as well. I'm like he, he's got the look of someone that uh, you'd think WWE would be Vince really. Adam, it? Yeah, probably Rides though. It's a strange one because he's I'd with um, he's with Scarlett Bordeaux, isn't he? And she's unfortunately yeah, had her not, and he is, released, upset. granted. Yeah, because um, be I think she's they well they were both ringside for a double or nothing. Yeah, and it was almost like are they are yeah, they there on their own yeah, yeah. coin or are they yeah. trying to? Get force involved. the way in, yeah. get a deal, get some camera time or something. I don't know. Yeah, I don't. I do like. I don't. I've only seen Killer Cross wrestle a couple of times, but he is a monster. Like big, he's huge. big, huge, big guy. He'd be. A, he probably would be one of the a top guy in WWE. If yeah, you could see him he as signed. Yeah, yeah, you could see him as like a universal champion. Definitely. Even definitely, he's that. He's got that stature, yeah, and that build to him, hasn't he? Absolutely. Um, the knockouts division. So. Um, Impact Knockouts title, the the Monsters Bowl four way match, um, Taya Valkyrie, Havoc versus Rosemary and Sue Young. Right. I don't really know much about. I know a bit about um, Rosemary and. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Taya Valkyrie. I can't tell you all about Sue Young. Apart from she was um, the Chinese consulate's daughter in Rush Hour Two. <laughs> no way. Or was it Rush Hour One? <laughs> okay, either one. That's the right fact. Um, she just is just the character that gets kidnapped to the star Rush Hour One. Okay. And then Jackie Chan's like, I'll get Sue Young back, and then Chris Tucker turns up and he's like, Do you understand the words that are coming out of my oh, mouth? Oh, okay. Is that, and then they that go to like that, that Chinese like Chinese um, casino that's laundering fake money. Right. Um, and the guy's like, Everyone's a winner, so everybody's putting money into it and winning money back, but all the money they're getting back is fake because it's just like being printed. Okay. Uh, and he goes to meet. Um, Don Cheadle um, at a Chinese <laughs> restaurant and he like burns the money in, the, in like a locker and it burns purple and not red and apparently if you burn purple money then if you burn money it turns purple then it's not real right. it's not red so he's like yeah it's fake money then Jackie Chan's like holy shit the laundering money so then they have to get suits made they go to a gay guy this gay guy like makes some really nice suits they go to the Chinese casino um, <laughs> every, everyone's a winner the fireworks go off they're playing roulette like everybody's winning uh, Chris Tucker's got to make a distraction so he gets on the table and starts dancing the guy's like get down he's like is it some black you mean racist he's like I believe that black people white people any colour people should be winning some money. They all go mental with throwing craps. He's hitting, him, he's hitting winning every single time. <laughs> Jackie Chan goes upstairs, sees a guy. Um, they fight for like a little bit. Uh, then Chris, Chris Tucker turns up, kills the guy. He's like, wipe yourself up, you're bleeding. Like, throws a napkin at him. They come back downstairs. Sue Young's got like a vest on him with a bomb on it. And he's like, Sue Young! And then they get her. And then they cut the jacket off and he throws it and it blows up. And then they start Rush Hour 2 at some point. So have you seen this film before then? Yeah. Once or twice. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Okay, tag- I might have mixed Rush Hour One and Two. In that. I've not seen him for quite a long time. That might be like a combination of both films, but it works either way. Like, which way you look at? It. Well, I've not seen him, so I believe they're him. really good films. Um, Impact World Tag Team Match, um, Latin Exchange. We've seen these guys in um, Ortiz and Santana. We saw these guys at, uh, in a Progress show. Who? In oh, LAX. Yeah. Oh, sorry. You said Latin Exchange, and I didn't put Latin that American together. Exchange. Yeah. Sorry. LAX. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, we saw these guys. Really good. I fucking love LAX. They're so good. Really good wrestlers. Yeah, another team that I think are rumoured to maybe sign into AW as well. Really? I've read that somewhere. Interesting. Yeah. 
Yeah. LAX um, are over for like a couple of shows in. They're doing the. Are they doing Birmingham and Newcastle this weekend? Progress. Uh, yeah, I like think Manchester sign, might like, be soon as it's well. Newcastle this weekend, and I think there's another show in Birmingham the day before on Saturday. Okay. I think, but LAX are over for that as well. They're wrestling a couple of games. Amazing that really, match that really they had good. in. Um, was it? Is it December? I can't remember the last time I went to a Progress uh, show, but they were. It was great. It was against CCK. Yeah. Yes, it was really it was good. Fantastic as well. match. Amazing match. Absolutely amazing match. So yeah, it's the. No, it wasn't against CCK. Who was it against? I thought it was CCK against British Strong Style that we watched. Yes, it was. CCK and Jonathan Gresham yeah. against... Who, who wrestled LAX? Was it... Um, what do you call them? The champions? Aussie guys? Oh, yes, it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Aussie Open. Aussie Open. Nearly there. Aussie guys. Oh, the Aussie <laughs> guys. Aussie guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thingy <laughs> Open. The Thingy Open Aussie guys. Yeah, no, no, that was yeah, like, yeah. they I, were fantastic. But I get either way, though. Like, I'd never seen them live before. And I'd never seen them live. That was yeah. the first time I've seen them live, but they are fucking amazing. Absolutely wrestlers. brilliant. Really, really good. So, yeah, they're facing um, the Rascals, Des and Wentz. Um, never heard of them. No. <laughs> Um, and anyway, Impact World Title match: Brian Cage versus Michael Elgin. Oh, big lads wrestling! I like that a lot. <laughs> Proper big lads. I've wrestling. seen them two wrestle numerous times on a PWG shows over the years, like in singles matches against each other, and it's always just fucking pure carnage. Like, really? it's amazing. That'll be really good. Really excited for that one. So yeah, that's on Sunday. Um, I, didn't, I, didn't, I might watch that. You know? Yeah, it's like, on no fight actually. Oh really? Yeah, um, it's on fight. Um, I'm not sure how much it is, but it's like twenty dollars a yeah. credits, I think. I had no idea that was what's happening. Yeah. I might have to give that a go. So it's on yeah, it'll be on fight this Sunday. Mickered. And then we'll hopefully talk about it next week. Yeah. Um if be, we watch we'll it. watch it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we better do it really. I mean if you're buying mate, I'll watch it. <laughs> yeah. That's, um Yeah, pretty good. So we don't really talk about impact much. I never I don't I watch think the it, only so time we probably ever did was when we it. talked about um Austin Aries as kind of yeah, the shoot work shoot thing. Work thing that he did. Um and that was maybe like November time, I can't even long remember. Time, probably November. one of the first shows we did. Uh yeah, probably would have been. Long time ago. I don't watch the pro- I don't watch the product, so I don't feel like I could talk about it if yeah. I don't watch it. I'd not be able to tell you anything. But maybe we'd get a bit of more of a fresh insight then if we watch this show. A bit yeah. more of a As a wrestling podcast, we probably should watch wrestling that's available to us, but <laughs> We just don't do it. There's other things, isn't there? There's too much of it. It's too much on, mate. Too much of it. Too much on. Um, this week, we, so last week we spoke about um, the OJMO in our sort of little series of highlighting yes. the entrance for Natural Progression Series mm-hmm. for Progress. is on the 14th of September. Mm-hmm. Um, so we put out a little thread on Twitter, um, just a little breakdown about who they are, kind of what they've done, the match you can check out. Yep. Go and see them, you know, try and, if you've not seen them before, have a little look into the guys who are going to be in, because the whole idea of it is these are guys that are up and coming or Mm -hmm. have not been seen much um, and are really worth, you know, checking out. So it's always good to maybe go in with a little bit of an insight into who they are. So this week week we thought we'd talk about Gene Money. Um, Yes, I love Gene Money. Absolutely brilliant. Amazing. I love G- He's so funny. Amazing. He was at the, the Breed show that I went to, um, Never Fight a Man with a Perm. Yeah. Still having, I think he's still having this, well he is because it's not finished, he's still having this False Count Anywhere match with um, Session Moth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, absolutely brilliant. Oh, he's wicked. He's so good. Like, but he's great. He's great in the ring as well. He's not just like he's not just a comedy wrestler. That's the thing. He's like, brilliant in the ring. There's, there's a lot of comedy wrestlers that are just shit wrestlers, but he's yeah. genuinely very good at wrestling as well. Yeah. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how he wrestles in this progression series. Yeah. Because I think he might go far, but like when it when it was announced, he tweeted like he did like a big tweet saying like I've always been written off as this guy that's yeah. like you know not all, that's just a joke and all this stuff, and he was like I'm going to prove him wrong. Yeah. And then he was like. I'm gonna win the fucking thing, and I was like, "Yes, mate, go, go on, like, go on." Son. Yeah, I think I tweeted him going, yeah, "That's go on, yeah, Gene, that's it, like, Gene, go on, mate." I, I'm really excited for it, but he is like so, so, so funny, but also really good at wrestling at the same time. Yeah, it's like there's not a lot that can do both. He, he, no, it's a very, a very unique situation to be in that you've got someone who yeah. can entertain as well as they can, yeah, he but finds be the balance very well. as good in the ring as Definitely. they are as well. Definitely. Um, yeah, like I said, that that um, session match was just so funny. It was the way they just kind of kept going out of the <laughs> out of the hall and then just appear yeah, through another door else, somewhere yeah, else, yeah, yeah. and then because there was like a, a balcony. Yeah, there's one bit where he 
pops out from where the locker room is and then Sesharov comes out through the top yeah. and they're all like shouting and they're like this is fucking brilliant this <laughs> yeah, really this clever. is so good really clever he's the current resurgence champion as well yes. he beat uh, Spike Treve yeah, a few yeah. weeks ago he beat Jimmy Havoc for a title as well didn't he he did point? yeah we've actually linked that so we've put another thread out today um, today being Wednesday at the Lights Pod um, at the Lights Pod uh, just a little rundown of Gene and who he is and a link to and a link to that match that yeah. I think is on YouTube actually so it's, oh, it's free to watch um, but yeah, he's. I hope he goes far. Me too. I think he's got a he's got a big potential. Big big potential. He's more. He's wrestling more and more now yeah. than he has in the last few years. Yeah. He's done. Uh, certainly, he might. I don't think as of now he's had as many matches as last year. But he's certainly wrestled for more promotions. Yeah, um, cool. Which is good because mm-hmm. it's just bigger exposure yeah, to a absolutely. bigger crowd, absolutely. and then obviously for progress to to pick up on him, oh, and, man, and man. for someone like William Eva to. Nominate him. Nominate him yeah. as well as his pick for really cool. the tournament. I like that. It's wicked, man. Um, so, yeah, we've got a bit of a time until then. Yeah. But... One every week. One every week at the yeah. Lights Pod. It, it'll be pinned to our tweet. Like, the first... The start of the thread will be pinned to our Yeah, page. we'll pin it and then we'll we we'll maybe link them all together just so you can have oh, a yeah, rundown yeah. of all of them as well. And Yeah, if you're unfamiliar, have a look on our Twitter. Um, get to know them. And then when the, when the show comes around, it'll be on, like, is it... Um, demandprogress.pivotshare.com yeah. Uh, yeah, I think just, tickets are still on sale to be fair if you're in London or you're around and you can get there tickets are on sale yeah it's at the Camden Ballroom as well yeah it's um, a wicked venue like we said last time usually um, it's a match in a in a show every other week yeah um, the, the one we saw month. was Spike Treve and Drew Parker I think it was um, and it was like this is a natural progressing series match yeah. and it's it was in Manchester Yeah. whereas this is all one show yeah 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 so a bit wicked man yeah really excited for it Really, really looking forward to it. Mm-hmm. He's having a match against uh, Chris Brooks for the Resurgence title. Nice. Title. title. For the Resurgence title, um, which is coming up in a few weeks. Um, I think it might be the end of August, actually. Right. Which was July now, isn't it? So it is a few weeks. I'm going too fast yeah. this year. Um, so, yeah. Um, but they're only down in Leicester, so definitely go and check them out. Absolutely. Um, they have some great matches yeah, down there. And I think another match on that card is um, Candy Floss against Connor Mills. Nice. She's great, yeah. Yeah, I like Candy Floss. Good wrestler. Really good. Really good. We've seen it. We saw her um, at a progress show, and then she recently had a, a tryout for NXT UK as well. She's wrestled on NXT UK, hasn't she? She has done, yeah. She's yeah, been on the show. She was part of the tryout um, the other week where they got nice. a lot of the the women down. Um, Session Moff was there as well. Yeah, she, she was. got yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. Um, Giselle Shaw, um, mm-hmm. oh, Debbie Kai, tell us quite a lot. There, yeah, yeah. yeah um, quite a lot to go through. Absolutely. But, um, yeah. Um, so, yeah, quite a quick one this week. Um, a big week. Yeah, but good. It's yeah. been good. Yeah, it's been good. It's been nice to talk about WWE in a bit of a positive way as well for yeah, once. Yeah, like the first time Rather than, should we just put this somewhere in the middle of the running order yeah. and just glance, just glance over, over it, it and, get on something else. and then we'll just go and talk about something no, no, else for a little genuinely bit? genuinely like positives. Like I said, I didn't watch SmackDown, so I've got nothing to complain about about that. I just really liked Raw. just thought Raw was wicked. I did like actually on SmackDown, just going back to a little bit, I did like... Um, Kofi Kingston flipping Sammy uh, Samoa Joe off. Did he? That was quite good. Nice, no, didn't see that. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, flipped him off and gave him a, a trouble in paradise. Got it. Just really? title. What a legend. I did like, like that. What a legend. Um, so yeah, in the meantime, catches uh, the lights put on Twitter. Just keep an eye out for the threads that we do about the guys in the natural progression series and obviously anything else on there as well. Um, if Instagram is back up and working, we do put stuff on there. It's still down. I just think it's still down. Um, yeah, what are we going to do? So we'll put stuff on there as well. But yeah, Apple Podcasts. Podbean, Spotify, YouTube. Everywhere. Just uh, get to know. Google Stand at Lights podcast and you'll find us. Don't sweat the technique. <laughs> That's it. See you later. Bye bye.